Welcome to Excel 2013 Pivot Table Definitions. I'm Trainer Laurie. What pivot table definitions? Well, first we want to get to know the fields, then how to use the template because that makes it very easy to create a, t a pivot table, and then syntax to help you create the pivot table. It's not how to use it, but why, what goes where. So I'll explain all of that. Now we're going to look at definitions that will explain how pivot tables work. Notice on the right it says pivot table fields. All of those are the columns that are in your database, and they will show up there automatically. So those become the pivot table fields. Under them is the template layout area. When dragging and dropping the fields from the top into this area, start with the bottom right and move in a backward Z. Values, rows, columns, then filters. I'll explain this in more detail later. And notice there's also a defer layout update. In other words, I don't want to see the changes while I'm making them, but I want to change them all at once. So that's your last option. The first field on the pivot table template that starts our backward Z is values. And values are generally a number that we want to sum or count. The data appears on the pivot table at the intersection of the columns and rows. By default, the pivot table will automatically create a grand total column and row two. Next on our backward Z is rows. Rows is the default setting if you just click a field at the top. It automatically goes into the row template. The row puts the records from that field or column listed in alphabetical order on the left side of the pivot table. Plus, the row label filter drop-down appears above them. You can have more than one row label in your pivot table. For example, you, if you use last name in your rows, you might also want to show first name to go with it. But this is also how we can create groups. The next one in our backward Z is columns. Now columns we know from Excel worksheets. So columns will be the column label or header at the top and the values will appear under them. Just like row labels that we saw earlier, you can see the column labels drop down. The last one in our backward Z is filter. You might only use filters occasionally. The filter says in addition to these other ways of viewing it, I want to look at my data for just these certain fields. The filter shows up at the top left as a label with a drop down. You must click the drop down and choose a record to see the data. Notice you have the option to select multiple items by checking the box. Use some syntax to help you when you want to create a pivot table. So what does syntax mean? It means blanks, fill in the blanks. And what I want you to do is to take the text and fill in the blank with your own pivot table fields so you can build your pivot table step by step, blank by blank. Let's look at the first one. Sum the blank. And sometimes you might want to say count the blank, but we'll just say sum or total the blank. So that means if you have something that you need to sum or total or add up, then that would go in the first field in the bottom right corner. That would be your values, sum the blank. So you look at your pivot table fields and you say, yes, I need to sum the annual salary. So that would go in the bottom right corner. Then the next one for row labels would be organized by blank. So if you then need to organize something, okay, I want to sum the annual salary, but I want to organize it by position. Then I need something in the rows. I need that position in the rows. And by blank, that means it's getting more complex, and I need to put something in the column label. So whatever I fill in that blank with goes in the column label, and in this case, it's management level. And that goes in the top right box and occasionally by blank, and that would be the filter that we sometimes want to use and sometimes don't want to use. But we click the drop down to see it. In this case, sometimes I want to see it by performance rating. Now, if you only have one or two of these fields filled in, you probably don't need a pivot table. If you can't fill in at least three and maybe four of them, then maybe all you need are subtotals. But when we have all four, or even three of these blanks that we need to fill in, then we want to go to the powerful pivot tables. And I'll show you how easy it really is to create a pivot table. That's all the time we have this time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe to the Trainer Laurie channel.